Here I am in Middlesex Street. Let's find number 36. Hello, sir. What do you want? Hello, ma'am. I would like to speak with Mr. Levy. Do you know if he's in? I am Mrs. Levy, his wife. He's not arrived yet. Do you know when he'll be in? Oh, no idea. You know, he works at the butchers and helps at the slaughterhouse. It often happens that he doesn't come in until early morning and then leaves right away. Well, listen, as soon as your husband Joseph returns, tell him that... My husband isn't called Joseph. You aren't the wife of Joseph Hyam Levy? No, of course not. I'm the wife of Jacob Levy. Mr Hyam Levy used to live here with his parents, but he moved. I... Mommy, Mommy, who is the man that you are talking to? But this poor child has syphilis. He carries the mark on his face. Leave us, children. Go back inside with your brothers and sisters. Yes, Mother. <sighs> As I was saying, Mr. Hyam Levy doesn't live here. He works in the butchers near Oldgate, but I don't know exactly where. But if you find him, he will surely live next door. Butchers always live near their work. Could you possibly give him a message on my behalf? It just... I don't see him often and... Well, even though we know him, we aren't on friendly terms, you see? Is he bothering you, Mommy? No, Simon, not at all. That's a handsome boy you have. It's strange that he has light hair. He takes after his father. Strong, with light hair. Wait, he sounds familiar to me. A man of about 50 years old, very big, at least six feet tall and left-handed, correct? You are mistaken yet again. My husband is only 32 years old, no taller than 5 foot 3, and he's right-handed. Obviously, there are many Levies in the area. I will leave you, and I pray that you'll excuse the disturbance. Perhaps we will have the pleasure of meeting again. Farewell, ma'am. Goodbye, sir. Daddy! I must return to Baker Street. Let's go to Baker Street. Well, Watson, not looking so good. Whose fault is that, Holmes? If you hadn't shown me your masterpiece in clay... Some actions have much larger repercussions than would be assumed at first glance. Listen, Watson, in a few minutes I will leave Baker Street in order to meet Jack the Ripper and put an end to his crimes. Beforehand, I want to go over all our discoveries to assure myself that everything is clear. Jack the Ripper? You know the identity of Jack the Ripper? Without a shadow of a doubt, Watson, and I assure you that we are in possession of all the elements required to determine who Jack the Ripper is. Would you like to do this work with me? Well, we are still missing certain information in order to finish this investigation, Watson. Perfect, Watson. Let's determine who Jack the Ripper is, Watson. Thus, we have five suspects. Let's add the elements that correspond to each of them.
And there you go, Watson. Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper. Fantastic, Holmes. And terrifying. But some aspects of this case are still unclear, at least for me. For example, Watson? Why does the man only kill prostitutes? The man kills prostitutes because he blames them for the misery of his life. He must have frequented them assiduously, and, during these nocturnal visits, he contracted syphilis, which he passed on to his spouse, and via her, at least one of his children. He is an angry man in despair following a mistake that cannot be fixed. Why does he only kill such miserable prostitutes? He never had the means to afford prostitutes of higher standing than Nichols, Chapman and the others. At one point in his life he was forced to steal to make ends meet. This indiscretion cost him dearly. He was imprisoned and exiled from his community. He had frequented low-class prostitutes, thus it was they who infected him and they who must pay. But why did he remove the organs? To take vengeance on his own community, which rejected him and had more success than he. He is a man who bore the burden of a sinister reputation, that of a thief and a madman because of his internment. So he took his vengeance in the most cowardly and horrific manner imaginable. He rubbed his knife on the uterus of a sick prostitute before using it. He passed Edow's kidney off as a veal kidney. Why did he disfigure the faces of the last two victims? Revenge yet again, Watson. This is what you did to my child. You will suffer the same fate. And the piece of apron and the message at Goulston Street? The only reason to have placed the piece of apron incriminating the message and attracting attention towards himself is that the people that Levy holds responsible for his arrest live in this building. The butchers where he committed the theft is found in Goulston Street, and the majority of the butchers who denounced him surely live close to their workplaces. But finally, Holmes, why didn't his wife or anyone else notice anything? His wife has many children and must be very busy. The man is a butcher, which must facilitate things when one is questioned by the police in the street and must justify the blood stains on oneself. Furthermore, butchers often work during the night as the meat must be sold fresh each morning. His nocturnal absences were easily justifiable. Finally, he works in the butchers or slaughterhouses. Nothing could be more simple than slipping a kidney in here and using a knife soiled with human blood there. This story is frightful, Holmes. Indeed, Watson. Lies, infidelity, venereal disease, murder, mutilation, and finally cannibalism. A complete anthology of what humans at their most vile are capable. Let's go at once to Whitechapel and put this madman where he can do no more harm, Holmes. Let's, Watson. I do believe we are not alone. I hope these men won't prevent us from passing. Me? No. But you, yes, Watson. Your journey ends here tonight. Pardon? You are sometimes a little hot-headed. Uh, moreover, Mr. Solomonovich has a few things to tell you. I won't be long. You can come in, Mr. Holmes. He's waiting for you inside. Everything was organized according to your instructions. I don't know how to thank you. Later, later. Dr. Watson is awaiting an explanation from you.
Hello, Watson. Holmes, have you the slightest idea what you are doing? I think so, Watson. Leaving this bloodthirsty pervert at liberty and hiding his existence from the London police? What folly! Certainly, the police will never find their man, but with so many men deployed, this affair will indirectly have a benevolent effect on the crime in the vicinity. But Holmes, wait! Justice hasn't been served and we are accomplices to the fact. Justice? But I don't serve justice, Watson. I serve truth, and incidentally, I serve my country, and I don't think that I have ever served it better than today. Imagine if after months of terror and a murder as abominable as that of Miller's Court, we deliver to the English people a man of the Jewish faith, a journeyman, and head of family as the guilty party. A man who forced members of his own people to eat human flesh. All of this contained tension would have exploded in a myriad of anti-Semitic acts which would have thrown Whitechapel into a rage of fire and blood. And this man's family, who are completely innocent and have suffered more than their lot, would have been the first in the line of sight. Should we condemn an entire people to shame and promise them a thousand wounds because one of their members committed an unmentionable crime? Neither I nor you have the right to do so. Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper, is now in the hands of his own people. I have complete faith in Mr. Solomovich and the members of his community who, I remind you, courageously helped us. They took great risks and acted with the most salutary discretion. And, oh yes, it is understood that you cannot chronicle this investigation. It would be best to invent a story that takes us far from London during the somber period in pursuit of, let's see, something challenging, a ghostly dog that glows in the night. Don't be ridiculous, Holmes. But what will happen now? The police will endure a serious setback and a real loss of credibility. And... and this... this man? Well, a few months after the murders have ceased, the police commission, finding themselves at an impasse, will come up with a story to tell, and everyone will vow that they know the secret identity of the killer without having the right to reveal it. As for Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper, he will be imprisoned by his own people. He will pace like a lion in its cage until the end of his days, haunted by his crimes and his insatiable vengeance. Until finally the disease which drove him to kill those poor women will finish its work and make him its final victim. <laughs>